And then what do you say? So here's where we get to questions. And this is my favorite part. It's coming up with so many different questions to get what you want, right? And usually the ones that work the best are the ones that start with how and what, with the occasional why. And why do I say, be careful with why? What do you think, Rick? People type in the chat, yeah. type in the chat. Why wouldn't you want to use why, right? Um, so my thoughts about why is why usually, um, why usually um, 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 makes them, makes the other person feel like they did something wrong, you know? Yeah. Like, why did you do this? You know, yeah. like, why? Like, yeah. why did you mess up? <laughs> yeah, like when you're a kid, right? It takes them back to being a child. Like, why did you do that? Why did you take a cookie? I told you not to before supper. Why did you do that? Right? Yes. Um, so that's why exactly. I love what's in the chat. It's accusatory. Yeah. makes other people defensive, you know? Okay. So yeah, like this is a good one. Like I, I, I like swap why with how and what, you know, yeah. which is more, yeah. that's more curious now versus assertive. Assertive is actually why when you think about it, right? That's right. That's right. And you, it'd be interesting if you use how and what questions, you can actually get to the why and the reason under the why without asking why yeah so 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 type in the chat what would what would be a good like what question you know right mm -hmm. what or how question you know and then i think and then i think um karen's going to share uh, some opening questions um um oh, some opening question what would be a good like how and what question um to replace your why question you know what's on your mind what makes yeah. you feel this what are your thoughts, Karen? Like, what, what do you think about these white questions? I love it. You know, if you think about it, lots of times we would have said, why are you thinking that way? Or what, what may, why are you doing this? Like, but just replace it and it changes the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So these are some examples. There's so many you can make that, you know, and I think when we're asking questions, I actually ask them to myself before I ask myself questions before going into a meeting. I ask, what, do, what would I like to see happen? Okay, what is my ideal outcome? What is the worst case scenario? Okay, they're gonna quit. That's the worst that I think. And what's the best? They're not gonna quit. Maybe they just wanna change their hours. Maybe, you know, and then what's a, uh, what's a middle ground where I'd be happy with? I actually ask these five questions myself all the time um, when having conversations. So you wanna begin with those questions to yourself and they're all what's. And then you also want, to ask those to the person you're meeting with right so they present something you know what are you hoping to happen out of this meeting well i want this this okay what would be your ideal outcome well if i could switch my hours from 11 to 7 to 7 to 11 okay so and what would be the worst case scenario outcome out of this well you said no okay what would be the best you said yes and what would you be happy with i don't know like somewhere in the middle okay now let's have a conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right so it really sets you up uh well when you kind of define that i i find and they're all what questions right i mean you could say how as well um i'm gonna give a few more examples of questions but and, and, and just before you jump into that what i love about this karen and this is something i've learned over like managing people and leading people is that people respond better when they come up with their own solution right mm -hmm. So if you could ask the right questions on your like weekly one-on-ones so that um, they feel like they are part of the decision-making process, they will actually, it will actually yield a, a higher outcome, you know, yeah. right? Yeah. Would you, would you, if that makes sense, type in, uh, type in buy-in in the chat, type in buy-in in the chat. Karen, what's your thoughts about getting staff buy-in this way is getting them to like come up with like the outcome, you know, but you oh. never you'll have much, much greater um, buy-in and engagement if they come up with the solution because then they did it. And the, the beauty of it too is like, then you, when so, it doesn't work, it, well, you came up with this. You decided on this. Yeah. Oh, you told me this is the middle. You told me that this is the best option that we're going to move forward, right? You know, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and the reason I like these things to ask these type of questions too, because a lot of time, you know, you know, we have staff, they, they just want to complain, right? They just actually don't want to change. They just want to complain. So if you ask these and they can't answer, awesome. Why don't you take these five questions, go away, come back with answers, and then let's have a, a discussion. Oh, yeah. and then sometimes they don't come back. Yeah. Because they, and that's they don't, okay too. <laughs> that's right. okay too. 
Um, yeah. So yeah and, and, and I'm going to add one here. To, uh, one of the ones I really like too is that because I don't want to come up with the answer. Like um, I would say, I would ask him like, um, you know, uh, what options do we have? What are two options? Um, uh, what are two options that we have? You know, right. yeah. and they can say option one, option two. Oh, great. Which option are you leaning more towards? You're feeling my thunder here, Rick. Oh, my, my, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> I never looked at your slides. Okay, anyway, go. Okay, sorry, carry okay. On. okay let's, let's carry on. And what are some response, Jen? So if somebody answers you, um, we can have a variety of response. So these are the same questions you're going to ask your staff members. And then how do you respond? And you respond with more questions. You just get more curious. So I listed a few examples of some responses that you can use um, and we can see in the next slide. Awesome. Oops. So, yeah. so this is where you get curious and this is the fun part. So in, in what way would that help you? Or things like, it seems like you're really unhappy with this. Is that correct? Yes. Or it looks like, or it sounds like. Even just saying, how so? Tell me more. Can you give me an example? Um, and this one I like to, that word has so many different meanings. What does it mean to you? I actually use this now when people, when I ask, do you want to work part-time or full-time? They say part-time. That word has so many different meanings. What does that mean to you? My definition of part-time and your part-time definition might be different. Um, so these are just more curious questions to get responses to really find out what this is all about. And then if we put it all together in a sequence, how does this flow? And this is um, really has to do with human relation principles. And this is from Dale Carnegie, which I did a leadership course on this, which was really great. Um, and so again, you're, you're just kind of flowing through these HR principles, um, even though we're not HR specialists, utilizing the concepts that we laid above. And this is kind of how it can flow. So first of all, we're showing up with the right mindset. So we want to respect the other person's opinion, never say you're wrong. That's not right. You're wrong. Right. Um, otherwise they're going to be on defensive right away and it's game over. Okay. If you are wrong as an owner, and I've done this where I've messed up quickly admit it and say, you know what? I dropped the ball here. I take ownership. This fell apart. I was in the wrong. Um, and then you're going to bring, begin in a friendly way. That's the other thing is that instead of just saying, you know, what do you want to meet about? You call me, how are you? How's it going? How are your kids? Because then they could just relax. Oh, my dog's barking. Um, they're going to relax. What's the dog doing, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and the defenses are going to come down, right? And it makes a, a better environment for communicating. Yeah, yeah. I think this is key. Like, I always like to start um these meetings i have where i uh, talk about something personal first you know yeah right? yeah like i'm gonna check in on their life you know check in on their family their relationship yeah. maybe like uh, a check-in on a conversation we had last time that was personal it could be that boating trip it could be that yoga class or it could be that retreat you know like you know and just to, just to get it going right so yeah Um, and then define the purpose of the conversation. If you called the meeting, then define it. The, you know, the reason that I wanted to meet with you was this, or the, the purpose of this meeting is this. And then, and then I always like to start with, I want you to know, like you have done an amazing job at, you know, at this, at running the front desk. You've been an amazing mentor to the physios. Um, your input in this area is super, super important. And then if it's something specific, um, you can, I like to get agreement. So would you agree that as a company, we decided on this policy. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So then you've got agreement right away. So you're already a step ahead because you've got agreement from the other person. Um, sorry, I might have to go let my dog out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, or else she's gonna keep barking. Okay, that's okay. So, 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 yeah. I think I think Karen brings up a good point. Um, is, uh, is, uh, is, you know, you want them to be able to, um, you want them to be able to, you want them to be able to like, um, agree with you, you know? And so I think that that's a good opening way of, of starting this. So, um, sorry for the dog commercial, uh, interruption. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you let the other person do a, a great deal of the talking and, and the way you do that is by asking questions and let them talk. Ask question, listen, let them talk. And then when you get to the point, 
where, okay, we got to come up with a solution. And